Well, grace to you and peace, good morning, and welcome to Second Congregational Church of Greenwich. We're delighted to be with you today. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we hope that you will use the chat function to say hello to us. We're delighted to know that you're out there and uh, we'll be delighted to wave back. Also, want to be sure to let you know if you have joys and concerns that you would like us to lift up over the course of this week, please also use that chat function at any point to let us know about those. If you are used to our, our live stream, you'll know that we typically share those joys and concerns a little bit later in the service. We're a little short-handed today, and so we're not going to be able to do that, but trust us to pray, and uh, we are more than delighted to do that, and, and we will share the joys and concerns more broadly in the newsletter later this week to make sure that people who maybe have missed the live stream also are keeping tabs on where their prayers need to be directed. Uh, in order, to, in order for us to support one another. This morning we have a little bit of, of an innovation here in the world of live streaming. We're very excited. Alexander and our men's chorus and our women's chorus have been working very hard uh, over weeks to, uh, to put together a couple of pieces for your enjoyment. You'll see those were pre-recorded. Those took a lot of uh, the, the singing did not take tweaking, but the coordinating takes quite a bit of tweaking, I understand. And uh, we're delighted to be able to share those with you today. If you are a member of our men's chorus or our women's chorus, or you're a, a friend to, to either or to both, we think you're really going to love what you hear. And we're so grateful that they were willing to participate in that and uh, really looking forward to doing that. It has been way too long since we had uh, we had the choirs of the church as part of our worship services, and so we certainly hope that you will enjoy that. Let us pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for this day. Thank you for all of the ways in which you've brought us safely here to this moment. Help us as we feel especially some of the burdens and the challenges of our lives catch up with us. Help us to hand those over, Lord, to you, remembering that at every moment you are with us and that your power to sustain us and to call forth new life is the power that brought this very universe into being and maintains it each and every moment of our lives. Help us, Lord, to just be quiet for a moment and look look to the dawn of a new world just beginning to peek over the horizon and help us in this hour to know that next thing that we might do to step just a little closer toward that new dawn. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
Friends, Scripture gives us words of life that through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit become the word of life. Let us listen then for that word in this lesson. Our scripture this morning comes from Isaiah, and comes from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning at verse 9. God says through the prophet, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to heaven without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, says God. That word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Friends, this is the word of God. It can be trusted. minister friend of mine attributes her faith to her grandmother and her call to ministry to the high diving board at summer camp. It was her grandmother who said she didn't have to go to Sunday school if she didn't want to, that she could just stay in church and participate with the grown-ups. And that was an important moment for her as a Christian. But actually, the high diving board at camp, if you can believe it, was another. The Congregational Churches of Connecticut had a summer camp back then. In fact, all these still years later, it's still going strong. It's called Silver Lake. And my friend, Davida, was a camper and then a counselor from the time she was about 11 years old until she was 19 or 20. And camp was an oasis for her, as summer camp is for many kids. Kids came from all over the state, from all kinds of families and backgrounds, and they were transformed by their experiences there, as they still are. And certainly, so was Davida. 
except that is for one thing. DeVita was terrified of the high dive. The high dive at the camp was essentially back then a flimsy board nailed to a kind of, it was nailed sort of like little rascal style to the side of a tall tree. They have a better board now, trust me. That's what they had. And you went up to that high dive by, by climbing the branches until there were some rudimentary other boards tacked on as a sort of ladder. Again, the kind of thing nobody is okay with anymore and with good reason, but it was okay then. And it was a rite of passage at the camp to take your first plunge from that high dive into the lake. It was that more than anything else, in fact, that signified that you were a camper, and not just a camper, but a, but a true silver laker, which is what they call it. And that, that was fine. I was fine. Except for one thing. My friend, my friend DeVita, was terrified of that high dive. Now, when, when she had been new to the camp, a new camper, 11, 12 years old, that was one thing. People would try to encourage her, people would try to inspire her, people would try to challenge her, but you know, it's a Christian camp. How much pressure are they going to really put on you? If a kid says at a Christian camp, no way, here I stand, I cannot do any other, that people are going to respect that there. But as a counselor, as a counselor, it was her job to encourage, her job to inspire, her job to challenge other people to make that jump. And it was about two years into her time as a counselor before anybody seemed to notice that while DeVita was really, really good at getting all those 11 and 12 year olds up that tree, nobody seemed to remember seeing her up there herself. Well, then she met Tommy. Tommy was a challenging camper. He was 12. He was from Hartford. He was an angry kid. As it happened, also a little bit of a heavy kid, the kind of kid who is always the last one picked for anything, and that is exactly what Tommy was, and Tommy knew it. As camp went on, it had not been a great time for him. He retreated. He retreated more and more into his cabin and into himself, and nobody, nobody could reach him. Well, then sometime at the end of his first week that year, it was camp-wide swim time, and he was there standing off to the side. And it was there that my friend DeVita noticed him. Have you gone off the, the high dive yet, Tommy? She asked. Tommy, Tommy didn't even respond. Come on, come on, it's, it's, it's a Silver Lake tradition. Nothing. I bet you can do it. Tommy? Tell me, tell me, go, go take a look. Tommy looked up. I'll take off my shirt and everyone will laugh, he said. No, they won't, DeVita said. No, they won't. I promise that they won't. He didn't move. Tommy, Tommy, you can leave it on. Come on, come on. Let's go. It wasn't until they were at the foot of the tree, at the foot of the high dive, that my friend says she realized that everything around them had stopped. 
that everyone around them was watching, that even, even the people in the water had stopped splashing. Tommy started to climb the tree. But you know, Tommy wasn't a tree kind of guy in general, and he was a slow climber. And maybe you had to be someone who wasn't all that into climbing yourself to see that first tiny moment of hesitation, that first inkling that suddenly the ground seemed a whole lot farther away than you'd expected. And before Davida knew it, without thinking about it consciously at all, she was herself climbing up that tree right behind Tommy. She was right next to him, and she leaned in, and she just very quietly said, we can do this. We can do this. And then somewhere, what seemed like far below them, people started calling out, Tommy, 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 which was not helping. We're going to do this, Tommy, she said. We're going to do this together. And they ooched out onto the high board a half step at a time. Don't look down, she said. Oh, God, said Tommy. I just looked down. No, don't do that, Tommy. Don't. Just look at me. Look at me. Okay, Tommy, she said. One, two, three, okay? Somewhere, somewhere down below them from what seemed like the bottom of the earth, she heard what felt like the whole camp going one, two, three. She and Tommy screamed the whole way down. And to hear my friend Davida tell it, the moment that she came up out of the water, she knew that she was going to be a pastor. You see, until that moment, she had not realized that there was something bigger in her than the sum of her own fears. Until that moment, she had not realized that somehow God had been working on her all along, strengthening her with a courage that she did not know she had, and giving her a heart that cared more about what someone else needed than about what she thought she needed. And until that moment, she had not realized God could do that. I think about that this morning in the context of these words from Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 comes at a very particular moment in that remarkable, remarkable prophetic book from the Hebrew Scripture. You see, in Isaiah 55, the people of Israel have been in Babylon for a generation the people who are the living, breathing nation of Israel are people who were born into bondage, born into captivity. They had never known their home, their true home. All they knew was the situation around them, which was a painful one, a difficult one. And it's in this moment that God speaks God's words through the prophet, and they're such important words because they're words that say that God 
can do things that are so different from the world we see, that God is capable of giving us, planting in us something bigger than the sum of our own fears. And Isaiah says that, and it's important. Isaiah reports these words. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower, bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. And you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. That phrase, go out, the word that goes out from God's mouth and this idea that God's people will go out, that's not accidental. Those are words that actually come from the Exodus, from the story of Israel's great liberation from an earlier incident of slavery, even before they were a nation. And so this idea of going out is so important. To go out is, is what freedom is. And yet, what Isaiah wants to say is that this going out that God will accomplish is going to be different than that going out before, that exodus going out. The exodus was a, one of those situations where you grab, you grab what you can and then you just go. You're fleeing for your life. You're running for freedom. This will be a very different kind of process. It is a going out that is more of a peaceful walking home, a claiming of the promises that you have been given. You will go out in joy, God promises, and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. It's a vision of going home, a vision of returning to this place that you have always longed for, but never known, never seen in anything other than dreams. There are so many dreams that we hold in our hearts, so many longings that we scarcely have language for. And in those situations, we're invited to hear these promises God makes through the prophet Isaiah, that this future for which we thirst this hope that we have against all hope given what we see. That's not nothing. It's everything. And it is absolutely who this God is and how this God works. And so in these circumstances that life sometimes puts us into where what we see is little more than the sum of our own fears, Isaiah is here to tell us, God is here to tell us that there's so much more than the sum of our own fears. That God has been working on us all along, strengthening us with a courage that we do not know we have and giving us hearts that care more about what someone else needs than about what we think we need. That is who this God is. 
That is what this God does. Who is this God then that we encounter? This God who tells us to give up our safe places on the ground and to go up into the precarious world of the high trees. The God of miracles, that's who. The God of transformation, that's who. The God who liberates us from the fears that keep us down, that's who. And the God who sees more in us than we see in ourselves, that's who. I don't know about you, but if life has taught me anything, it's taught me that if it's easy, it's not God. It might be good, might be beautiful, might be special in just about every way, but if it's easy, it's not God. God loves us too much to let us settle for what is easy, and he pushes us to find the strength he placed inside us before the world began. If only we will decide to take the plunge, God will lift us up with wings as eagles, knowing that it has been in us all, all along. And that the word that God sends out of who will be, that's a word that does not return to God empty. Well, my friend never did become a high diver exactly. She did go back to the high dive at the camp more regularly after that. As for Tommy, he he became a silver laker himself and remained one for many years. And that's the end of this story. But of course, the larger point is it's just the beginning of their stories. Just as the end of the time of exile and questioning and doubt and emptiness in Babylon was really the beginning of a whole new chapter in the life of God's people. We place, we face plenty of tall trees of our own in this world. But Jesus promises us that if we, if we can just find the courage to jump, we will rise from the water as new people. He asks us to give everything we've got But with each new challenge, as we find him in new ways and new places, he blesses us with treasures beyond anything we could ask or imagine. May it be so for you. Amen. Sing the mighty, sing the mighty, sing to the Lord.
Well, friends, now it's time when we share what's on our hearts and minds this morning. As I mentioned before, we don't have the person to actually share your joys and concerns, but we still want you to be sure to use the chat function and let us know and, and count on us to keep praying those over the course of this week, and we'll get those into, into the church newsletter to make sure that we share them more broadly with people who didn't catch the stream until a little bit later, and just to remind them to keep those in your prayers. Let us pray. Holy One, there are things inside us, far more beautiful than we realize. There is a dignity to each of us that we can find can find it so very hard to see. So often the, the fights in which we engage, the struggles that we undergo are really fights and struggles with ourselves. And all those things, those voices in our lives that say who we are is not enough and what we bring is not right. But Lord, you know something different. You know what you have planted in our hearts and the power that is within us that you put there to rise to every occasion and face down every challenge and lift lift the very brokenness of this world up to you that it might be healed that it might be transformed and so Lord as we face those tall trees that oh we don't think we have it in us to climb We remember the words of the prophet. Telling us that what we need is already in our grasp. And that you rejoice in every moment when we grasp it. Lord, help us this week as your people. We're in a time of such uncertainty, a time of worry, a time when proper caution takes such wisdom to understand when even the simplest ways of caring for one another feel like a strange new burden. And we wonder, we wonder just what it is that we truly must do. You remind us that what we must do is love one another that we must love our neighbors as ourselves, and that the healing of the world is a process that you never 
imagined undertaking without us. Whatever that may mean in the places where we dwell, whatever that may mean in the places that we work, whatever that may mean in this world we call our home, that is what you place before us to do, Lord. We ask healing for those who are sick, patience for those who seek to offer care, freedom from fear in a time when fear takes so many different forms and leads us down so many wrong paths. Help us, Lord, to know your kingdom and to know that your kingdom breaks forth in our hearts just as surely as it breaks forth in our world. And it is with that kingdom in mind that your Son, our Savior, taught us to pray when we are together. And he taught us these words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I want to be sure to remind you that our ongoing conversation on race and Christian faith, is, which we're calling Uncomfortable Truths, 
is happening again this coming week. It'll be Tuesday at 7 p.m. Please email me, max, M-A-X, at 2cc.org if you'd like to participate in that. Uh, there is so much going on. There are so many things to tie into here and here, there, and everywhere, and we know that. And that makes us so grateful that you have been able to spend this time with us. If you need us, please do let us know. You're welcome to email me, Sean, S-H-A-W-N, at 2cc.org. He's uh, up in our uh, video room right now. And, uh, but he's eager to help you, too. And we are eager to be with you in all the ways that we can. So uh, with that in mind, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Shield the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and with singleness of heart. And that God who leads you up to the tall board will be with you, sustaining you, guiding you, and cheering you this day and always. Amen.